What's up, Burrito? Shade Tree Surgeon here at Tiger Temple Tattoo with the one and only Ken Dean, my friends David and Angie. David and Angie down from Kentucky, specifically only to get tattooed by Ken Dean at Tiger Temple Tattoo. Yeah, and they, they figured they'd go to the beach for a little while while they're here as well. Bonus, not now though, because Ken's putting an awesome tattoo on her. He's covering up a bad tattoo with an awesome tattoo. <laughs> Thanks for coming out and getting tattooed by Ken Dean, one of my closest friends, absolutely amazing human being. He's worth the visit. I'm not. I'm kind of a, I'm kind of a dick. And Ken Dean, back on two wheels, baby. <laughs> So awesome to see my man Ken Dean back on two wheels, although he's got a vintage bike that we're going to help him get back up and run soon too. Tiger Temple Tattoo, man. If you're in the Tampa Bay area, even if you're just here on vacation, vacation tattoos are the best. And if you're riding your bike, remember here in the front, the only place in Tampa with official Shade Tree Army motorcycle parking. Now, if you're down here getting a tattoo from Ken, make sure you ask him to see the matching tattoos, our BFF tattoos that we got. Just tell him you want to see the uh, the forever third grade tattoo. <laughs> he's not done with it yet, but he's working on it currently. Ken's working on a Brap Star Shade Tree Army flash sheet that's going to be hanging up in the shop. So I don't even know what it's going to look like. It's going to be a surprise. He didn't tell me what's going to be on it. But knowing Ken, it's going to be something amazing. And when I say amazing, I mean hilarious and dirty and forever third grade. Had to do some miles on ODB. Project Raw Dog. Plan B, the Dirtster. We've got the next Sportster Summer coming up, which is crazy to me because I spent months preparing for the last one and I'm supposed to leave in like a week for this one and I've done nothing at all. So I should probably put this motorcycle on the lift and check it out and give it the once over before I put a couple thousand miles on it. You guys don't know what Sportster Summer is? That is the off-road trip. Right now it's organized by Gigastat Cycles. It's an idea that me, him, and a few other people came up with you remember last year it was me him chicken fried rick adam sandoval jordan ray vlogs and a bunch of other awesome people we made amazing friends we did about five six hundred miles through the bdr to the back road discovery back discovery route anyway the barbecue route was awesome he's got a different one picked out for this year and it's actually sponsored by lowbrow customs it's gonna be an awesome time i'm super stoked about it but i definitely need to check this bike out because we're doing this one in pennsylvania and that's a ways away from florida I'm excited to do it again because the first time I did the BDR, the first Sportster Summer I did, this was still an 883. It had almost all the stuff. It didn't have the rear shock. It had just uh, burly stilettos, which I do not recommend, but at burly stilettos. Now I have the race tech shocks, which are set up for my weight, set up for the kind of ride I'm going to do. I've got different luggage that's not going to move around as much. And on top of that, it ain't an 883 anymore. I got that 1250 SNS hooligan kit in it, and I'm really looking forward to using that on the BDR. Because 883 certainly may do, but this is gonna be a lot more fun. Well, I know I said that the KZ1000 wasn't coming off the lift until I put tires on it, but the test results have determined that to be a lie. It's gonna have to come off the lift. I wanna put tires on it, but I don't have the money for them right now. So, so it's gonna have to come off the lift right now anyway, because before any of that stuff happens with the KZ, I gotta get the Sportster ready to take the Sportster Summer. I'm actually feeling super under the weather right now. I don't feel good at all. And I've actually been fighting a really weird thing in my my throat and lungs for about a month now. So doing some blood work and taking some tests. So I don't even know if I'm gonna be able to go on the sports trip, but I can't think like that a week out. You gotta think positively. So I'm gonna get that bike ready. In the comments, whenever we have another bike around, which is usually for the raffle, everyone's like, aren't you, don't you have enough projects? Why don't you finish a project? I'm like, yo, almost all of my projects are finished. <laughs> like I have other ones that I've gotten that I'm saving for later, but I've got a lot of finished projects too. You guys need to back off. Also like, what a rude thing to say. Haven't you had enough? Never enough. Like I'll tell you when I've had enough. And it's <laughs> <laughs> anyway, first things first, I lost an axle adjuster. Doesn't hurt it if it's sitting right here like this because they're still tight in there, but if I was on the road and the chain needed to come off for some reason or I had to take the rear tire off for some reason, I would never be able to get that chain correctly adjusted. So let's go ahead and replace that. Just far enough adjuster out but not lose the adjustment. Yeah, alright. Shoot, if, it, if everything's gonna be this easy, it's gonna be, it's gonna be a good day. Let's 
since my last cotter pin broke. I'm glad I'm replacing that too. And not something I usually carry extra of on the road, although maybe I should. I know most people are a lot care more careful with this, but it's the Dirtster, baby. I don't care if it's got a little extra chain lube on it. Well, I've done my due diligence. I've gone around. I've checked stuff. I've checked to make sure nothing's loose. I got good brake pad life. My fluid looks good. We don't have any leaking fork seals. Everything on the exhaust is tight. Throttle cables, nice lubed, snappy, and adjusted. We got a cleaned and lubed chain. Uh, you know, just from this is just like a, any kind of rigid mount thing. You just got to go around it every once in a while and stick your hands on different bolts. Just, just put your hands on them. You know, you don't have to sit here and go over everything with a torque wrench or anything like that. But kind of just walk around the vehicle and and put hands on stuff because you would not believe the kind of things that actually get loose. But it's looking like everything's good. This thing is as uh, as ready as it can get. And I know this thing looks like uh, it looks like a wreck, but I'll tell you something about Evo Sportsters. These bikes, if you maintain them, they're incredibly reliable. Even with the 1250 kit in it, which is still a pretty under stress motor, even with that on it. I mean, it's this is a very reliable bike, even with modifications. Not really a whole lot to go wrong with them. You know, stuff can go wrong with them, but all the stuff that's known about I have replaced. There's this thing in the clutch uh, that they put in Sportsters in place of uh, enough plates that can sometimes blow up. You know, I've just, it's got oil in it. It's, it's ready to go. Essentially this motor really only has, well the top end at least, the top end only has a couple thousand miles on it. The bottom end has less than 10,000 miles on it. So this bike is ready to rock and roll. I say with such confidence. Now a better question would be, am I ready to rock and roll? So let's head up to Publix because I'm still not feeling super well. I gotta go pick up my meds. Well, let's take this thing for a little test ride, and I know my driveway always has a lot of random motorcycles in it. I actually got word from the guy who won the KLR 650. He says, go ahead and ride it around. I'd love to see it in some videos, so I think I'll do that. And what's this? This looks, uh, this looks an awful lot like a V65 Magna. One of the fastest, most powerful motorcycles in the world the year it came out. I wonder what this is doing here. More on that later. Hmm. I like this bike. Mm, yeah, I don't think I'm waiting for this. Let's take a shortcut. <laughs> With the Dirtster, shortcuts are always fun. <laughs> oh man, it feels good to have those race techs on the back. I might not be feeling good, but I ain't feeling that bad, baby. Woohoo! Got air on that one. love this motorcycle. Every time you're on this 1250, man, it's just, it's just begging you to crack that sucker wide open. And it feels pretty damn good. It's very rewarding. I like the sounds it makes and I like the way it makes me feel. I'm about as confident in this bike as I am in any bike that I've ever taken on a long distance trip. There's just something about an Evo Sportster. They aren't really made to go long distances. You know, they're not geared for it. They're not uh, insanely comfortable, but this is one damn reliable motorcycle. And although this one did leave me stranded for a little while, did eventually make it home. It left me stranded for a little while on the last Sportster summer. I did go back, fix it, and make it the rest of the way home, but it was nothing to do with the bike. I actually just broke a spoke on the rear rim. But seeing as I have Excel rims now with extra thick spokes, should be up to the abuse my 300 pound ass is gonna put it through. But even more than the spokes, it's really that rear suspension that's gonna save the day. I'm not feeling better already, man. You gonna talk about the best medicine? I think it's motorcycles. And I actually, I still feel pretty crappy. My throat still hurts pretty bad. My, I'm just feeling overall kind of down in the dumps. But riding around a powerful motorcycle definitely helps. Now let's get some actual medicine to go along with the two-wheeled medicine. Pharmacies are weird, man. I mean, I just went in there. I'm just like picking up pills for three different people. I just kind of walk in there and I say all their names. I'm like, yeah, give me all the pills. Pills, pills, pills. 
I walk up to the pharmacy at Publix, they know it's pill 30, all right, baby? I got I got enough to knock out an elephant and bring him back to life in the trunk of this thing. And they just hand them to you. I'm like, man, shouldn't there be like something else you check besides just like saying somebody's name and just handing over all this uh, prescription medication? But uh, no, nah, man, they just hand it right over. I promise I have almost no nefarious deeds planned with those pills. All right, well, let's go ahead and get the dirtster and my, my daughter carcass home because we have a live stream tonight on the Shade Tree Surgeon YouTube channel channel because we're giving away a buell in fact somebody already has had their name called for the buell i just don't know who it is yet so congratulations in advance i don't know who you are but i love making new friends and you're about to get an awesome phone call unless you really hate buells in which case you'll be like man screw you but i think anybody be stoked to get that bike that thunderbolt kicks ass uh, you know what maybe just uh one more shortcut before we head home <laughs> what could it hurt more on that magnet in a little bit, all right? Let's find out who the Buell belongs to first. 1985 Honda Super Magna. You go ahead and forget that Magna that you knew in the 90s. This ain't that bike. This thing was a totally different animal. The V65, 65 cubic inch, 1200cc V4, stuffed in a cruiser chassis that was really aimed at making Harleys seem a lot slower than they already were in the 80s. When this thing came out in 1985, or might have come out in 84, this was one of the baddest motorcycles around. It was this and the Yamaha V going at each other like rabid dogs for the top spot man there was not a batter cruiser that you could get besides the v-max just depending if you're a honda or yamaha guy 100 plus horsepower i think they were doing like 10 second quarter miles this bike was insane anyway enough talking about it let's go ride it magna the v65 this was a bike of legend a named motorcycle back when cruisers <laughs> a cruiser wasn't something that went fast this was one of the first. Everything that went fast before this was usually just a standard bike that just wasn't done. This bike and the VMAX, they really changed the game. So what does 100 plus horsepower in a 1980s bike feel like when you unleash it wide open throttle? Yeah, uh, not very exciting. <laughs> Not very exciting at all. If you couldn't tell, I'll clue you in. This V65 is not exactly operating at optimal performance. The guy I bought it from didn't speak any English, but we managed to communicate enough between us for him to let me know that he never actually registered the bike, even though he had it for a couple of years. He only ever rode it around his apartment complex. Now, it was kept covered. The paint is nice besides some scratches here and there, but it was kept covered. It was kept under a carport, and it was regularly ridden, but, uh, you know, my man loved this bike. He didn't want to sell it to me, although I'm pretty sure he understood something was wrong with it, but didn't really understand what was going on with the bike yeah <laughs> that's that's not what a magna's supposed to do when you twist the throttle open okay and definitely got uh, some warped front rotors too from the way it's uh yanking and tugging when i uh apply the front brake lever <laughs> not exactly taking off with uh any kind of authority <laughs> I mean, it's, I've ridden bikes that are slower, but this is supposed to be a legendary motorcycle. Oh, I've already got an idea of what I think is happening because the tachometer isn't working. And this bike, it's a V4 and it's got separate coils for each bank of cylinders. And what I think is happening right now is this is a V-twin, not a V4. Oh yeah, those brake rotors are super warped. Which is funny that this motor is well balanced enough as a V4 to run off of two cylinders and doesn't feel like it's missing at all. Now, I don't know that for sure. I gotta get home and start pulling spark plug caps off and see what happens, but I'm pretty sure that's what's happening. These old Magnas, especially since they're 40 plus, or that's when ain't 40 yet, but getting close, almost 40 years old. Uh, yeah, those old coils from the 80s, they go bad. So the ignitions. I'm gonna check and see if the coils are bad, but honestly, with this bike, because it's in such great shape otherwise, like it needs the basic stuff that a bike like this would need. It needs probably the suspension to be redone even. Yeah, it looks like it's got leaking front suspension. The rear suspension feels wonky as well. It needs new rotors in the front. I'm sure it could use a brake master cylinder rebuild and caliper rebuild. The rear brakes don't work at all. But other than that, this bike is in amazing shape. So yeah, this is second get wide open throttle. 
<laughs> it rides. It's just got like absolutely no ass whatsoever. This should have so much ass. But you find bikes like this, you find bikes that otherwise are in pretty damn good shape like this one is, but they've got something wrong with them that the previous owner just couldn't figure out. That I think I know what's wrong with it, so I did. I took a gamble. You know, I didn't start sit there and start taking it apart in front of them or anything like that, but I was pretty sure once I rode it around his apartment complex that I knew what was wrong with the motorcycle. On top of the other stuff that you usually have to fix on any bike that's 40 years old and has the original equipment on it. But I'll tell you right now, these bikes in really good shape, they're starting to bring in real money man if you see a v65 that's really good or even even a saber which go for even more those things are starting to fetch five figures and more on bring a trailer okay these ain't these ain't bringing in chump change anymore on top of that it's just a killer bike and hondas hondas never die okay you can always almost always bring a honda back to life and there's nothing i love more than taking an old motorcycle that had been relegated to i can't fix it it's just broken forever i don't know what's wrong with it i guess i gotta sell it and and have somebody scrap it out or use it for parts taking a bike like that and giving it a second lease on life because i got a feeling this bike story ain't done yet the funniest thing about all of this is honestly that the engine on this is so smooth even only running on two cylinders which is what i think is happening it's so smooth that if you didn't know anything about these bikes you could just ride it around like this and you probably think nothing was wrong with it you just wouldn't think it was a very fast motorcycle oh yeah i just took my hands off the handlebars and got a head shake too definitely gonna need new neck bearings on top of the other stuff as well but that's all right that's easy stuff let's see if we can fix what really matters and that's the heart baby that's uh that's that big and i said 1200 earlier that's that big 1100 cc mill down there that uh is capable of bringing so much joy but right now isn't let's figure this out Well, I don't know a lot about these bikes, but first things first, I'm just gonna turn it on, get it running, and start pulling plug wires off to see if the engine changes at all. That way, at least right away, I can figure out if it is actually running on all four cylinders or if it's only running on two. That didn't change anything at all. Uh, right away, I really don't even have to pull off another one. I just pulled off that back boot right there and the engine hasn't changed at all. So I'm actually feeling pretty stoked about this, man. It's nice to kind of know what the problem is even before I get it home and diagnose it. That usually doesn't happen to me, trust me. I'm gonna go ahead and pull off the other one because I don't know if they operate on a one, two or a side by side pattern. All right, so I just pulled off that back one back there. So right now it seems like just the front cylinders are running because I pulled off both back spark plug boots with no discernible change to the motor whatsoever. Which again, like I said, is just a testament to how smooth this motor is. That nothing changed. That it's still literally a rideable motorcycle only running on the front two cylinders. It doesn't even feel that weird. Let's go see if we can switch that coil around and get the back two cylinders firing. And before we do that, just for the sake of science, I'm going to start it up again and go ahead and pull one of the front spark plug wires off because it never hurts to absolutely make sure. Yeah, no, it's definitely, definitely, these aren't creating any spark. Okay, even though I seem like magic now because uh, I already knew it was wrong with the bike before I started working on it, I've never actually worked on one of these motorcycles before, so really don't know where to start. I assume this takes the seat off, or is that a helmet? Oh, never mind, that's a helmet lock. Feels like it also attaches the seat somehow, but it could be wrong. Let's go ahead and pull these side panels off. Maybe it's just got a couple of bolts holding it in on either side. What this is? Is that the gas tank? Is this thing? No. I was about to say, does this thing have a false gas tank? Like a, this is a gas tank, right? What's going on down here? That's funny that it's got a, a petcock down here. You can turn the gas off, but you couldn't get at it. So this is the fuel tank. This must be some sort of reserve fuel tanker. This goes down into there or something. That's weird. Never seen that. Another space for a key to do something right here. What? I do not know. Got this kind of cool trick little toolbox in the back here. Maybe the seat comes off back here somehow. Or at least I assume it's a toolbox. I don't actually know. Whatever it is, there's nothing in it. Oh, time to ask Google. Okay, Google says this is actually how you get the seat off, but it also, I'm glad I took the side panels off because the poster I read said, make sure you take the side panels off before you remove the seat because if you're asking how to do that, your next question is gonna be, how do I fix the side panels? Oh, there we go, hey. 
And so that's how you access the toolbox. A handy little stash box back there. Very handy little stash box. Not that I would ever have anything to hide, you know? But if I did have something to hide, this would be a pretty cool place to hide it. Looking back here, I see hinges. So I assume just take those two bolts out in the front and this thing lifts up like a hood. So I was right, this gas tank does lift up just like the hood of a car and you imagine my surprise when I thought, oh, is it false because it's so light? Oh, no, it's definitely supposed to lead into that smaller gas tank down there, but it's not hooked up, which, uh, since it has gas in it, definitely seems a little suspect. So I said, hey, let's go ahead and take a look in there because I hadn't yet, and yeah, it's just covered with sludge on the inside. Like any gas that you put in this would just absolutely make the vehicle not run at all. So this gas tank either needs to be recoded and relined inside, or I'm gonna have to find a replacement tank. Well, for right now at least, I'm just gonna go ahead and completely remove the tank because there's no way to gas this thing. Oh, luckily from here, it looks like the coils are right there. Very nice of you, Honda. These bikes always get a reputation for being hard to work on because, you know, you got 10 pounds of shit shoved in a five pound bag. Uh, I'm not gonna crow too much yet, but so far, this seems like it's all really easy to get to. I'll go pull them off, switch places, and see if we get the back cylinder firing. Well, it looks like this whole thing's gotta come out because these have nuts on the other side that I don't think I'm gonna be able to reach. Hopefully, if these plug wires are long enough, literally just flip this thing around without actually having to take the coils off this bracket. We'll see. Let's see what that gets us. Try hooking them all back up and see what happens. Also forgot I got two grounds over here, so let me hook those up too. Alright, run it again. But have the cylinders switched? Is it a bad coil? Let's find out. I'm gonna pull this off. Oh, up here, we should get a no. What the hell is that all about? Still have the back cylinders are still dead. All right, a little poking later, I found out that both coils are good and both coils would fire the front cylinder, but not the rear bank of cylinders. So I moved on from there, kind of poked and prodded at the wiring to see if I had a problem. Uh, not for very long because I just went ahead and moved to the rear to the CDI boxes. Well, lo and behold, swapped the CDI boxes and I found out that they got two very different timing curves when they get their pulses because they had a big old backfire, but pulled the plugs out and one CDI box gives me a nice strong spark on the rear cylinder and the other one gives me nothing. That's what we want to see. Well, until some parts come in, that's about all we can do with the Magna right now. But we have another motorcycle that has uh, joined this motley crew out here. Another 1200 Sportster. And you guys might recognize this one as the Dipster. And what is the Diplomat Sportster doing here? Well, well, Diplomat, he's got to do dad stuff right now. And when you got to do dad stuff, you can't always have an extra motorcycle that he got for Sportster Summer. So he called up Shay, who really wanted to do Sportster summer anyway and said hey i'm gonna have to unload the sportster regardless uh do you guys want it so shay can try to do sportster summer and shay said uh yeah i'll give it a whirl so let's see if in about three days we can get that bike ready to go on a thousand mile trip first things first let's take that thing for a spin because i'm not even sure what it needs i know diplomat put some of the tc bros parts on it but not all of them and we've definitely got a uh, yikes that an actual hole on the cover there we definitely got a little bit of a rust bucket here but it's got some new parts on it from tc bros it's got that side plate there so you can stand up on it without breaking it it's got the tc bros 19 inch front wheel and that rubber so got the old one on it so got this belt that is a uh, maybe just a little bit out of adjustment for a florida bike man this thing sure has got some rust on it that's for sure although i'll say the out of all the rust i think that uh that's probably the most troubling the guy that diplomat got it from lived out by the beach and the bike lived outside so that explains the rust well let's see how this thing goes man <laughs> uh yeah huh i don't know about all this that starts up well enough though feels like it runs all right wants the choke while it's running though huh 
Maybe it's just a little cold-blooded, man. I've never met a sports that started up exactly the same as another one. I will tell you, uh, definitely missing all the stuff that they've done to my dirtster to make it mine, which is like lowering the pegs, the risers, the height of it, the seat. I just feel like I'm uh, I'm on a tiny little motorcycle because I'm so it's so like mine, but it's so different. All right, how hard is the sucker to get into neutral? Oh, it goes right in. Cool. Every sports is usually different about that too. Shay's sports are sucks at it. Sucker running out of gas on me. Also very like a Sportster. This thing's definitely gonna need a little TLC to get it ready for Shay to go on Sportster Summer. Uh, we got a long way to go and a short time to get there. Fingers crossed. Mm, fingers crossed. Am I gonna be pushing this thing back? No, reserve is in the middle. There we go. I mean, it honestly seems to ride all right, man. That little coffin sputtering and dying at idle. Eh, it's just some kind of carb issue, and you, you can usually figure that out pretty easily. As long as it rides all right and freaking tracks all right. I mean, uh, we need pretty much everything, though. Got carb issues, needs uh, new brake lines, probably new brakes, rebuilt calipers. Uh... <laughs> A little bit of this, a little bit of that. Some suspension work, maybe a, maybe some crash bars, get it ready to go off-road. I don't know, what's the worst that could happen? Let's give it a whirl. Uh, it definitely feels like we got some, uh, maybe some power jet issues or something. It's just got a Screaming Eagle carb on it. The carb looks brand freaking new. Oh, only one way to tell. Gonna have to do a little bit of digging. Will this motorcycle make it on Sportster Summer? I give it about the same chances of me making it on Sportster Summer. As I was saying earlier in the video, I'm still feeling pretty under the weather. I've been fighting this for, for over a month now, and it's just been on and off, and I've taken some antibiotics, and it's come back, and I took some more antibiotics, and it came back again. So getting blood work done on Monday to see if there's anything like really up with, I guess, my white blood cell count, I'm not really sure. I think it's probably not, it's, it's something, you know? Maybe it's just a weird, I don't know what it is. Anyway, I'm not dying, I just feel like crap, and I felt like crap for a month, so I'd really like to not feel like crap anymore and not have it like hurt to swallow and be like coughing up shit, but anyway, we'll see. I don't know if I'm gonna make sports this summer. Life is full of unknowns, and knowing me, and I'm not even making this up or trying to be dramatic, it'll probably be decided literally at the 11th hour and wind up just like throwing a couple pairs of underwear in a bag and just hitting the road. Because that's how it usually goes down. But until that happens, make sure you subscribe to Shay Leesky because we're about to jump over to her channel and start work on that Sportster over there to try and see if we can get her ready for Sportster Summer as well. And that's going to about do it for this one. So until next time, y'all, keep it weird. Crashing through the sky comes a fearful cry. Shade tree. Army. Shade tree. Army. Armies of the night. Taking flight, shade tree. Army, shade tree. Army, nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. Panic spreading far and wide. Can the world oppose the deadliest of foes? Shade tree. They never say die, walking tall with banners high. Shade Tree Army, a ruthless gang of scum, villains, freaks, and bikers determined to rule the world.